In this video, we're going to talk briefly about our airway anatomy, and that is going to set us, set us up for a subsequent video where we are going to talk about airway anatomy innervation. So here I have my poorly drawn side profile of our patient. We're just going to go around and label some structures, and then we're going to talk about a few regions that we can separate our side profile of our, of our airway anatomy into. So the first thing that I want to label here is this structure right over here is the tongue. Tongue. And then we also have the upper part of the of the mouth, the roof of the mouth inside the mouth. That is going to be our hard palate. Hard palate. The structure more um the structure more posterior to that is going to be our soft palate. Our soft palate. And knowing these structures is important because it'll help us later in the video separate our anatomy into three broad categories, three or four broad categories. Now we have this structure right over here. This little hook structure, that is going to be our epiglottis. Our epiglottis. And this is the structure that is going to be reflected up and expose right over here our vocal cords. So I'm just drawing that X there to represent our closed vocal cords. I'm going to label it right over here. So if you, th this structure right here, I'm not going to label it, but it's in between the tongue and the epiglottis. This is the area where you want to place your Macintosh blade into when you perform a direct laryngoscopy. And you are going to get the tip of your blade in this area, which is called the vollecula, and you're going to lift up and out, up and away from you. And that is going to cause the epiglottis to move out of a little bit more anteriorly. It's going to move out of the way and expose our vocal cords for you to place your tube in. Now, if you accidentally, if you accidentally do not lift the epiglottis high enough and you think you see cords, but it's actually another, it's another lumen that's not our vocal cords, you may place your breathing tube in there on accident or by accident. And that is the wrong, that's the wrong quote unquote pipe to go into. So you would effectively be intubating the esophagus right over here, which is something that you don't want to do. So your esophagus sits, sits right behind your, tra your trachea or your vocal cords. So we're going to divide our airway anatomy into three regions. The first region is going to be called the nasopharynx. And the nasopharynx is defined, the area, the uh, basically the zone of the nasopharynx is going to be from the base of the, from the base of the skull to your soft palate. So this area right over here is going to be called your nasopharynx. The region just under that is going to be called your oropharynx. Your oropharynx is a structure that, that starts at the base of the tongue. Actually, I'll draw it down here. The base of the tongue. And it is going to go from there all the way to the epiglottis. I didn't really draw this to scale that much, but this is effectively our oropharynx. And then we have our hypopharynx. Our hypopharynx is going to be from our hyoid bone, which is the, the bone that supports our tongue. So let's actually just draw where our hypopharynx is going to be. So it's going to be from our hyoid bone. And then it's going to go 
all the way down to the upper part of our esophagus. So right over here. So pretty much this colored area is going to be our hypopharynx. Now we have one more area that we need to talk about, and that is the larynx. So let's just make a different color here. So our larynx is going to be the structure from our epiglottis, from our epiglottis, all the way down, all the way down to our cricoid cartilage. And I'm just going to draw that like, I'm just going to color that in. And this is going to be our larynx. And why, why is our cricoid cartilage the, the location at the end of the larynx? Because after that, you're going to see tracheal rings. That is basically the start of our trachea, after that cricoid cartilage. So this is pretty much our airway anatomy. One thing that I do want to note here, uh, just looking at my notes, is I said that the, the hypopharynx goes from the hyoid bone to the upper esophagus. I want to specify that a little bit more. We can actually bring that structure of our hypopharynx down because that is going to end just like the larynx at the level of our cricoid cartilage. So I'll actually label this here. Hypopharynx, hyoid, bone, into esophagus, at the level of the cricoid cartilage. So that means that our hypopharynx isn't in our airway. It's not located in our airway. It's just the region behind it. And we just use the level of our cricoid cartilage to signify the end of our hypopharynx. All right, so one last quick review. We have our structures of our airway anatomy. Our nasopharynx is from the base of the skull to the soft palate. Our oropharynx is from the base of the tongue to the epiglottis. Our hypopharynx is from the hyoid bone down into the esophagus and finishes at the level of the cricoid cartilage. And then our larynx, our larynx starts at the epiglottis and it goes all the way down to the cricoid cartilage.